time to think about something. Doesn't have to be an epic situation of, oh, I heard this story of an evil sorcerer and, oh, go wander around in the woods for a half an hour. Because then they're just going to go wander around in the woods for a half an hour, still being out of character and bored. You've got to do it in a way that makes them think in character. Maybe you guys can think of some other suggestions right now that I've said this out loud. Well, I can understand exactly what you're saying. I mean, I can't, I don't care what kind of LARP it is, you can't have action every single moment of the event. There's going exactly. to be, no matter what, there's going to be some kind of a, a, even if people are just taking a breather, it's going to be a lull. And I, what I get that you're saying is you have to find a way to fill that time gap so people don't start falling out of character and keep on the, we want them to stay in character as much for the entire thing. I mean, can't you um, kind of, uh, instead of instead of trying to force action all the time, create situations which allow a lull but still remaining in character, like within a tavern having a very in-character atmosphere? Or perhaps having enough subplots off of the main plot that when they're not actively out on the main plot or doing something, whatever their main focus was, <clears throat> they can focus on some other plot that is more role-play intensive, less combat intensive, or vice versa. Something that would blend really nice with something opposite of what the player was doing. Mm -hmm. Which is where the sort of round table, not necessarily sing-along, but when you think raucous tavern, what do you think? You think of, you know, the bard in the center corner, whatever, taking requests, making people sing along, getting people to sing along. There's no making, you just join in because you're caught up in the fervor and, hey, I like that song. I'm just trying to think of more ways that are akin to the director kick in the pants when you see someone failing their character which is generally, okay, what are you feeling right now? I would think right, I'll that, be right back. I would think that in most cases, people are, I don't want to say bored, but they're not engaged in any. That's why it, it starts to happen. I believe another reason is a lot of the players are relatively new to the game and they understand the action sequences because it's pretty easy to get a hold of a grasp of how to do that. But a lot of these players, and when I started, I was, I was definitely included in this. I didn't know how else to, okay, what else is there? You know, we didn't have a lot of town props. We didn't have a lot of NPC roles that were town related. So it was very difficult when you were done doing a campaign and you came back what what was then there you're just yeah I, I fought that thing i came back and the it's done now right maybe huh yeah you need there definitely needs to be like in town presence and that's where i think you know bards and storytellers and magistrates are really a main uh, platform that needs to be formed for your uh, NPC town affiliates. Even with that, I mean, going so far as to say just village, I don't want to say the village people because it's automatic YMCA, but even village villagers that are busy doing village things would tend to keep people uh, activated and going along with the story and uh, just if somebody is like, uh, I need somebody to help me fetch this chicken or wh whatever, you know, anything. Images, well, come, always... images come to mind of, you know, a Middle Eastern bazaar, you know, as you're walking through the marketplace and you've got people just jumping out at you with their wares. And... Man, if you had enough people for that, ugh, dream.
Hmm. But here's a thought that's just occurring to me as well. Everybody gets into their own character's head sometimes so much where they write that backstory and they're waiting, just waiting for someone to ask them more about their character to get that conversation. But is it that so many people are reluctant to start that conversation as well? I think a lot of people just don't know to ask. I would also agree that they don't know how to ask. They don't know how to interact with somebody, especially as a new character. And there's been some blog or some uh, girl posts about how to correctly in, uh, interact with a new character who's written a great bio on their on their scroll, but nobody in game theoretically have read it. So while you may know the story, your character at that game, <clears throat> this is the first time you've met them. You may have heard rumors or stories, but you don't actually know anything for tr for for a fact. Well, maybe that's something to engage and get people talking before an event as well, to have um, not only the event synopsis that you put up in the thread, but to have a list of rumors that may or may not include people's names or quest seeds beforehand, and yeah, then it might give fun. people a reason um, in character, too, to be like, okay, well, I'm in this town right now because I heard blank. And it could be about another person, or it could be a quest seed thing. But they have that idea before they even show up to the event then. Yeah, it could even be like very small little mini quests. Find out information about this person. Bring it back to me. They're, they're sketchy. They look sketchy to me. Could you go find out more about them? You, know, stuff? you could exactly. simply use the, the, the rumor format as well. I've heard this. Can you verify or verify that it's not true? You wouldn't know well, unless it, you asked the person. You could have multiple truths floating around as well. Um, in that, uh, I'm trying to recall, it was one of the games, a character that Die Hard was playing, and there was rumors circulating that uh, his character had a, a girl's first name. So there was all these, you know, oh, I think it's it's Madeline, I think it's Ruby, I think it's all these guesses floating around and there were some people that were telling others with certainty which one it was even though no one had a clue. And it was just a fun bit of extra fluff that meant absolutely nothing. Need more fluff. Fluff is fluffy and fun to pet. So is Odin. He's sleeping. Hmm? I know. That's why I said it. <laughs> Odin's here, but he's really... Not here. Congering up magical elements. I'm listening. Any thoughts, Odin? I mean, he but likes... you, you can't really stroke some new person into doing stuff. As much as, I mean, I even fall victim to falling out of character. Oh, everybody does. I mean, it's just, I don't know. I mean, I guess real life still plays a role, I guess. And, you know, you still want to see how your friends are doing or people you haven't seen in a while, like, you know. So, I mean, it's hard to say stay in character. I mean, even if it's three days, two days, even... Four hours. Perhaps we could put a guide together that kind of hits some of these topics, and maybe this would be a great topic as a uh, something to talk about at LARPCon. Because I did spend most of one of my days last week, this last week, putting together a very detailed draft of things that we could be doing during our Friday and Saturday that may be of interest to 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 people. And our goal at, in the medieval room at, at, at LARPCon was to make sure that there were things going on besides the tabletop stuff and the other vampire masquerade and 
and uh, the other non-combat LARP that was going on. We were supposed to be doing stuff on top of that so that there are <clears throat> alternatives to things to do. But I digress. Hang on a second. No, I mean, I agree. You know, that could be easily an hour topic. Just, you know. What are really the pitfalls of trying to play a character? Yeah, I can see that as uh, something we could talk about. I'm sorry, I missed that. There's going to be some veterans at the uh, at the event. There's going to be authors at the event. Um, Suddenly, I'm getting more frightened. They're Define authors. People who wrote, I think, the person who wrote Vampire Masquerade is actually going to be there. Oh. Um. Along with a lot of key players in the Milwaukee, Chicago, and Madison area, that if we present ourselves correctly, perhaps they will venture past their non, their role play, live action role play that, what is that called? That's non-combat, right? That's, that's, it's combat, but it's role play combat. It's still LARP. I know, but. Live action role play without combat. They rock, paper, scissors their combat. Which is why I never got too heavily into them. Yeah. But it's interesting, nonetheless. I, I'm extremely intrigued. I'm intrigued because I don't even know what the proper term is. Again, I'm so new to LARP, I'm only a few years into this. So. Most um, mind's eye LARPers are still LARPers. Yeah, it's true. Well, the World of Darkness manual actually describes their game as just a storytelling game. That's it. Gotcha. I don't think I want to do that because I will bring my sword and actually hit people. <laughs> well, I think you could contain yourself. What breaks rock? My sword. <laughs> <laughs> or you can scissors? just take a shit ton of alchemy and just make some, you know, plastique and blow everybody up. <laughs> Odin comes in with fireball. That would be anyway. Funny. Sorry. Uh, One, two, three, fireball. You're all dead. <laughs> no, I want to see Maelstrom watch everybody spin for a minute. <laughs> Such an evil spell. But yeah, how to play a character? I think we should have another topic, another group session on that. And. uh Role play, roll off, or fall off. Well, I, d I do think part of that comes into when you're deciding to create your character, you have to think, okay, yeah, that would be an awesome character to play, but you also have to, in the back of your mind, say to yourself, am I, as a person, and with my uh, personality, able to play something like that? Yep. Are we talking about the non-combat role, LARP again? Any? No, just oh, in general. Okay. Do you think we yeah. need to give like a more detailed um, advice for people who are actually creating their first character? Yep. In the scrolls, I was putting together some video threads. I was trying I mean, to say, okay, for uh, how to start your character video, how do we? What are some things? I, I posted some things and. Uh, Stash and some other guy, you know, some other folks chimed in, which is great because there was a lot of other things that I didn't think of to touch bases on, besides the general what to bring, how to act, blah blah blah. I guess my biggest concern about that is you can't really give examples because then everybody's going to have the same exact example. Right, that was kind of my my objection towards just a, having an outline made up because a lot of people are going to take just what the outline stage and they're not going to go above and beyond right yeah exactly like you know okay you're a mage well what do you do i can't what, imagine. 
Okay, what kind of magic? See, those are all the things that the video can of, talk about. A lot of people can't answer that because they don't have a clue. Do you want to be dedicated to just one magic school? Do you want to be all magic schools? You know, I mean, that's, you know, something you have to think about. I mean, I it's just it kind be, of, I mean, it's hard to throw, okay, well, you're, I mean, how do you know what you want to be personality-wise? Like, is your personality capable of, you know, being a rogue? Or is your personality capable of being a barbarian? But the video because everybody's just... everybody's real personality comes out in their character. It doesn't right. It, sh it shines right through. I mean, if you phys if you mentally can't grasp wrap wrap your mind around being, say, a, a mage, having to do incantations and stuff like that, then it probably isn't for you. And you, I mean, if you're more of a physical kind of person, I want to hit somebody with a with a stick, I don't want to worry about magic and stuff like that. Why would you become a mage, or why would you become a druid? Uh, for that, you know, just go straight out, become like a barbarian, become a fighter, become something like that. Here's a question, though. Uh, have you ever seen anyone go so far off type in that manner that they just can't back it up? Because I don't think I've ever seen something that far from what someone can actually pull. Um, I'm just going to use an example as Bucky. Right. <laughs> Not to be uh, mean, but I mean he has a very hard time staying in character. I mean, if his character, if he's actually trying to portray his character as being that goofy, I'm not calling the boy goofy, but if he's if he's trying to portray his character as being that dense and well, I don't know, oh, I don't know, I don't know, charge, you know, and I guess he's doing a great job, but. But personally, I don't see a ranger yelling charge. Those are questions, then, as elders, that we should be bringing up. See, I guess this comes back to um, things that I've brought up in the past, not here, but there's a mud I used to be a part of where there had to be an approval system. But how do you do that? Through LARPcraft workshops, like crafting sessions, you know, sit down with your players. It's actually what I did, is, is I sat down with them, I let them tell me the kind of character they wanted, and I, I just, I, it's just like with D&D, &D, when they're trying to create their character, you know, they, they say they want to do this, or they want to do that. I will give a bunch of random examples, like, what would you do if you saw a cat in a tree? Oh, well, I would climb up and get it. I would draw my bow and shoot it out. You know, I climb up the tree, you get the cat, and the cat decides to freak out and mauls your face. How do you react? Throw it across the room. I understand exactly what you're saying, and I think that would be a really good thing to do. Uh, people say they show up and it's like, all right, this is my first uh, LARP, or even on the scrolls or something, anything like that. But they say, okay, I want to be a barbarian... Uh, a human barbarian. And they're like, I want to be the person standing there going, okay, uh, talk to me like you would be a barbarian. Uh, tell me how you would react to these situations, just like uh, Sefra said. Uh, t things like this. Uh, portray yourself as a barbarian, and you can probably tell on your own if you're able to do that or not. Right, but in the terms of, with, with barbarian, it's kind of a rough one, because it's really how you personally define a barbarian a lot of people have in mind you know this is this brutish guy from the middle of nowhere you know he's unintelligent illiterate all he knows is fight 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 and right well generally for me the way i see a barbarian is it's somebody that fights on pure instinct you know it, it's it's emotion that drives them not training it's reflex and just natural cunning but right, I was, I was using that as basically an example. Right, no, but I, I was going to go a little bit more in depth than that. Oh, okay. Pers personality wise, like take Sephiroth for instance. My character is a barbarian. He loves combat, loves fighting. It's when he truly feels the most alive. Part of that's because you know he is half wolf, but at the same time, you know he's the head of a clan. He he is in a sense nobility. He's the leader of a military unit. Uh, 
and and in addition to that, he was trained by an ex mercenary, you know, uh, as a child. He was raised by him, and so he has all this this culture a part of him. So he comes off as being sometimes rather sophisticated. He knows how to present himself in the company of royalty and whatnot. But you pick a fight with him, and it's you know the the claws come out, and he's not going to stop till he's drinking your blood, you know, and eating your heart. I'm gonna, as the mediator of this discussion, bring us back into the point at hand. I believe we are on the right track. We are talking on the very technology that can help players out between games, and we know that a lot of players come on to Teamspeak and the LARPcraft website between games to get the information that they're seeking. If we, as elders, could provide the support to give weekly chat sessions, Q&A sessions, role play advice sessions, and just be there and talk with the players, they can develop those skills and techniques, even if they don't have an elder in their area, to make them better players even before they get started. I think that's a great idea. Absolutely. No, just seriously, it's a good idea. Right now, I'm actually recording this conversation, and it may turn into something where we could actually use it. I may have to edit out the Bucky part, but <laughs> it is a very good point that somebody playing outside of their character role or playing outside of the, you're thinking ranger, he's thinking this ranger, Sephiroth is thinking this barbarian, Ronan's thinking this barbarian, and these chat sessions and interactions can kind of bridge those gaps because Bucky may be playing that exact gung-ho ranger. He's a ranger, but maybe he's not really a ranger. He was forced into the ranger or something. I don't know. You know, based on his backstory of what he has, I can kind of see why he plays that character that way. But I can also see because of his actual, how he is as a person, that that also plays a heavy, a heavy tie into that role. Right. We're not, I'm, we're not trying to say that if you play this type of, if you play this class, it has to constrain to these kinds of uh, ideals and things like that. No, feel free to mix it up however you want. But I think what we're trying to say is don't send it so far out into left field that people don't even have a clue as to what you're trying to do. You just need an A follows B sense of logic that other people can follow, not A jump to Z. That's all. Insofar as the critique section that our tenant brought up a second ago, though, I've been wanting to suggest that, but I don't want to step on anyone's toes by, you know, singling someone out to be like, oh, hey, um, do you need help on your backstory? So do you just oh, leave an open forum saying, hey, do you need help? I'm here. But I don't know. There's just something about it in my nature that it seems presumptuous. I would probably, from a facilitating standpoint, start it off as a critiquing. Um, I'm sorry, Help not desk. a critiquing. More so a uh, session with a Q&A critiquing afterwards. Like a mini RP section? Possibly. That's one way to do it. Because I would love to run mini, like, one-on-one -on -one RP sections with people. I believe we... I mean, we have all the tools to do it. We can try it. I'm not saying I'm the end-all, be-all of RP, but, you know. If you're running RP, I'm, I'm grabbing popcorn and I'm in. <laughs> Do we need 3D glasses? Sure hope not. No, it'll already be in 3D. If you wear the 3D, then it's just colorized. 3D is when you close your eyes. All right, guys, I got a dip. Oh, have a good night. See you, man. Luega. Good night, all. User disconnected from your channel. And I mean, hey, maybe, maybe that's something um, 
you could leave open to all the elders or all your realm things like Sephiris was saying he's sat down and had that Q&A with his players that if you want to run an RP section and then like a Q&A afterwards that you can pick what elder you want of these available people who are into it right yeah, but when everybody starts asking for you and nobody wants our help, man, we might get offended. <laughs> that wouldn't happen. They'll get my help at the end of a sword. <laughs> Why can't you dodge? I declare my dodge on you? You can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. I'd be very interested to see how an RP section would go. And I think that even other elders and other game leaders would, you know, we have a lot of new people trying to start realms, a lot of new people. And Their we want to make sure we get them off to the right foot. We want to get them on the right track. And we want them to have some sort of success as fast as possible. Because a lot of these folks are going to, you know, they'll start a group, they'll burn out, they get two or three people one time. And they're second guessing it already. Yeah, and they'll get all disappointed. Yeah. So I mean, to I really want to do some sessions on promoting to say, look, this stuff doesn't happen overnight. You have to realize too that if you're doing this in a group of, you know, you're doing this in a town of 500 people, who are you really trying to, you know, how are you going to be able to do games to attract the right crowd? And you got to kind of look at some of this stuff. Well, then, Are you going to have to travel? Because... Can you do it locally? Can you, you know, we're in a town of 50,000 people and I can barely get 30 people. When we start marketing outside of our area, now this thing starts to explode. You know what? Um, is there a roller derby team near you, Artemon? Roller derby? Yep. There is? In this town? I have no idea. Maybe there is. Are you asking is. or are you telling? I'm asking. Oh, I know there's I one. Excited. I know there's several in you know Milwaukee, and I know there's several in Madison. And if anybody would be really into, hey, let's run around and be different people. I only know what I know from roller derby from the movie, and I know that's not an accurate portrayal. I'm actually hoping that um, after the uh, panel at Anime Milwaukee, we're able to get a bunch more people interested. Mm -hmm. Did you like how, well, I mean, was that an accurate way I did that with the three different types of User immersive your groups? Channel timed out. Oh, I no. do think that's good. Or a Good um, description of uh, different levels of immersion in games. And then um, the slight snippet of foam armor and cosplay armor and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's that it's mm. just, you know, your medium and light groups are going to probably be more apt to it than your traditionals. But I didn't necessarily say the traditionals wouldn't do it. But I'm pretty much just sense. saying leave it to the elders. You know, it'd be silly to not approach the anime and the cosplayer. A third of my guys are cosplayers. Right. What is cosplay? Uh, costume, costume play. play. So it's it's like LARP, um, User in some channel. aspects, but um, a good portion of uh, cosplayers don't get into. Um, as heavy of characterization as uh, most LARPers do. See, I, I've, I've found the opposite to be true. Most of, of your cosplayers, they try to become so much of their character that that's, that's all they do. They walk around, they strike poses, you know, they're trying to embody that character. It, it's almost a, a form of worship at times, especially over in Japan. Okay, so who are the guys that dress up like uh, Vegeta from Dragon Ball Z and, you know, Hello Kitty, Kitty and stuff, and stuff like, like that? that? Cosplayers. Mm -hmm. Those are cosplayers, okay. 
But that's not all cosplayers. That's just some kind of cosplayers, right? Right. Mostly. The whole th- the whole concept behind cosplay was that it's it's your way of of showing how much you love what you're doing is to dress up and act like you are that character. Uh, it's Wikipedia has a really good definition on it, man. I, I'd really suggest checking it out. Ah, uh, crap. I see with all my videos people running around looking like Ronan. I want your armor, if that's anything. I could have groupies. Could you imagine a Ronan autograph signing? <laughs> no. I'd stand in line for that. And if only to watch alone. where the boiling point was. <laughs> Just stand, start stabbing random people with the pin. Get out of my line! Signing Gone Ron with Ronan, your barbarian. Is that pin LARP approved? <laughs> no! <laughs> I think we talked. On some, we touched on some really great, really great tools that we could introduce to the live-action roleplay community and perhaps... You know, we know that, you know, the stuff we're doing isn't, you know, TeamSpeak is free to everybody, and you could do it on Skype and Google Hangout and all this other stuff. So, I mean, this is just one platform. Hopefully, we could start a trend with other LARP groups, too, to get more interaction and more communication. Because, you know, overall, this community has a lot of interaction locally, but nationwide or worldwide as a whole community i've never seen such an industry so broken and i think i can i can answer the the reason why a lot of people i think a lot of groups think that if they have contact or stuff with other types of larps and other groups that a they're going to lose their uh their player base to that other group b uh the other group may try to take over them and make them use their rules um I mean, I'm assuming, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's other things, but those are the only two that I can really think of at the moment. Everybody's Prob- looked upon as a threat. Right. The problem is in its infancy with North America LARPs. <clears throat> that is very true, though, sadly. Your system is it? whack. You need to use ours. Yeah, there's, uh, I don't know if it's a sense of entitlement or the sense of immediacy or the weird clickiness that seems to happen sometimes, but it is a trouble. I'm trying to identify the problem so we can come up with a solution. I've just been trying to find all the different forms of other systems and just at least commenting on things. Asking them questions of why they do it that way without being antagonistic about it. I really think that there's there's nobody there to show them how you can have an open communication between all the different groups without forcing a group's way of playing down other people's throats. I mean, the broad topics we're talking about with with what we want to do on these panels and RP sessions can apply to any group. It doesn't have to be group specific at all. You could go an entire session without saying in a, you know, about making one example of any group. I think that'd be most beneficial to the entire industry. If we're going to talk about LARPcraft specific stuff, we would just advertise it as that, right or no? Ryan, you were going to say something? I was going to say, do you think we should try and um, get into contact with uh, some um, leaders of different LARPs? Um, I mean, probably, you know, we could get a hold of a couple of them and, like, sit down and have non-specific to any LARP meetings talking about the same subjects we've been talking about right now. Well, the, take uh, J, take even um, the uh, last hope. I mean, our systems are very similar 
and things along those lines. But it's it's really hard to get, uh, it, from what I've seen, I don't know about uh, Artenon because he's been doing most of it, but from what I've seen, it's hard to get feedback from them uh, either way about stuff. I constantly get feedback from them. I push that envelope all the time, and I do it specifically to see what the response is, not to actually try to get them to do our system or vice versa. I constantly tell the last Hopians that LARPcraft could easily adapt your races and classes, but you couldn't do it backwards. You couldn't adapt to all the stuff that we have. That's not the way your game is played. And you know, trying to do that kind of uh, that kind of push, it was either echo. Uh, Echo or uh, I think Kristen said it. One of one of the I think it was Kristen that said it. That the most enjoyable part of the two different systems is that it's two different systems. It's enjoyable to do both. Right. So with that in mind, if we could push that, if we could push that message across that all systems are okay here. If no systems exist, we are the system. Everybody's the system. LARP your rulebook is your rulebook. So what? Actually, yes, that's Last one Hope of LARP. The... If you just go to lasthopelarp.com, you'll see they're a great group. Fantastic. Yeah, they, they are. I, I wasn't trying to put them down or anything like that. Oh no, because no, you, no. you know we go to their game, their their games, and I have a blast every time we go. It's uh. But I just don't see the. I know you, you just said that you get a lot of feedback from them. I just don't see a whole lot of the uh, group as LARP group, not like uh, Y LARP, not like LARPcraft, not like Last Hope or Nero or anything like that. But LARP as a general, anybody trying to uh, say, okay, LARP as a sport, we need to try to. Uh, market this uh, correctly if we want more people to enjoy it because we enjoy it. You know, other people may enjoy this. We're just not getting it out there to people. Right. Yeah, marketing is something that's not a strong point on any LARP group. Some do it okay. Well, that's one of the things that... Um... And this is going to sound weird, and I'm going to say it anyway, turned me on to you guys when we first met, was when you explained how your system was that anybody from um, LARP craft playing in any other LARP system still gains LARP craft XP. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a beautiful idea. It's one of the best, really. Thanks. I mean, we don't, yeah, we don't want to, okay, you're going to invest your time, you're going to go to this other uh, LARP event, and you're going to either, you know, you're probably going to enjoy it, uh, because, you know, you're around other LARPers, and you're doing what you like to do, uh, but if you go and do that, because you're doing the sport, you're going to get credit. And I just wish more groups would enact that kind of policy. Just to be like, hey, we're not running a game this weekend, but those guys over there are, and they're pretty cool. I've seen a lot of that, actually. Uh, European folks do it really well. Uh, a lot of the Southern California groups that I'm a part of, um, they do it really well because they're all, there are a lot of small groups, and they all try to work around each other's schedules. And they use their social media platforms to say, hey, we're thinking about a game on January 19th. Do any of the other groups that you're part of have a game on that day? You know, you know, some say, most of them said no one said yes. They talked to the other promoter. They got their schedules switched around, and then they were able to have a successful event. But again, that's where you have a LARP on every corner. I want LARP on every corner. I know. <laughs> Oh, God, and now I just have this image of LARPers standing on the corner. Five dollars. <laughs> Shooting cars with arrows. The main thing is, is to, you know, 
doing sessions like this that are not abrasive to other groups to show them that this is just a common place for sharing ideas and you know improving the community that we all love maybe that would be a good way to start it to show that hey we're not here to try to take you over just we're all here having fun and trying to make games better for everybody what are your ideas give them a place to uh, lay out ideas and comments and things along those lines that would help the sport in general yeah there was an old RP forum that I used to be a part of, and I'm trying to recall its names, but that was basically the essence of it, was, hey, you guys, I'm thinking of this game. This is my main plot outline. Here's my main monsters, and everybody would chime in and just basically help you build the world. It's like green gaming. Hang on. So what I'm hearing is sessions designed specifically for characters and sessions designed specifically for groups. Can we recount what you mean by groups again? Groups as in promoters, clubs, anybody holding an event. Regardless of game. Right, regardless of game, talking about all the different facets of a game, successful quests, plot lines, NPC schedules, you know, what are some things you did good? How are some, talk about some things that we've done bad that could have been avoided so other groups don't make the same mistakes, learn from others' mistakes. That that would be phenomenal. It would be even better if we could actually get uh, some of the elders or admins from some of the other groups to chime in as well. I can guarantee you, as long as we're not talking different rule sets and it's just game stuff in general, most of them will be on board for that. Nothing like having guest speakers. I'm excited. I think this is great. I would definitely love to see our community in general just growing exponentially because you know, then you're going to have more people coming to everybody's games and the things you can do with your games is just going to be amazing. Right. Yeah, basically, like, if you got something that's just not working, maybe another group has already uh, figured that out and they can uh, lend a hand to help you fix it. Absolutely. Okay kind of envy what you were saying about those guys out in California. Uh, <laughs> here, I'm meeting resistance on two fronts. The uh, main two gaming groups, aside from the LARP crypt group that I'm starting, is Dagger Here and World of Darkness. So you've got one that's strictly combat, and you've got one that's strictly roleplay. And neither one wants to budge. Nobody wants to even consider merging the two. They won't either. Nope. Uh, we found that out when we started doing our Wilarp stuff, and we were talking to Bella Garth and Ampguard and uh, Dagger here and SCA, all the po all the prominent groups in Eastern Wisconsin. Sorry, yeah, there's also an SCA group here too, but I, I've been discounting them as far as. LARPers. Right. Well, because oh. SCA is weird. They're like so meticulous about everything being period correct, but they're still all just themselves more often than not. Yeah, I actually touched on that earlier uh, in a question for uh, Greycore. Yeah. Um, and the one who has given, I didn't know too much about it, and Seal Wolf actually is a big SCA, and uh, he gave me a lot of great insight on how they're different and you know they're they're historically accurate no fantasy um you know it's kind of like replaying a history it's kind of like a civil war reenactment 
kind of like that. I, I got more of that out of it. Essentially, yeah. And their fighting is, well, blunt swords and steel, you know. Which is all fine and pretty intense fighting. And that's all fine and dandy, but what I, with SEA, what I see and what you guys were describing is okay, we're going to address some period stuff, use period weapons, but uh, I'm going to sit here and talk about my cell phone for 45 minutes. Oh, no. No, 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 no. You better leave cell phones and any electronics in your car. Well, no, I mean, okay, we, I'll talk about work, or I'll talk about uh, uh, the, the new exhaust system I got on my car and stuff like that. Sorry about the cell phone. <laughs> Analogy. <laughs> that was a very can't... stringent line of nose. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I can't, I can't say either way. I've never... The group here has... I've invited them to our games... I've wanted to go to their games. I've asked questions and never got responses. I basically just would have to show up and just roll with it. Stupid S- armor. SCA is one of those clicky things, though, that I was trying to touch on before, because there's, there's this weird sense of, because we're so period correct, we're better than everything else, and, oh, you want magic in your game? And even though there is some overlap... There's that like weird subculture snootiness. Sure. And so even though some people who like SCA might want to LARP, they don't tell their SCA friends. All right. So how do we? That's, that's the taboo. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> and it's just so strange that two activities so similar have that clash. Believe it or not, I've seen a lot of similarity between the paintballers and the airsofters here. Oh yeah, of course there is. Most of the airsofters around here actually play on a paintball field. Yeah, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I was a longtime veteran of paintball when airsoft came around. I'm like, Phew. if it doesn't break paint, just they skin. All, they all cheat. They won't no, call we their don't. shots. Excuse me? <laughs> I do airsoft. <laughs> Didn't get Again, into speedball. Do we need to take this out onto thing. the field of uh, battle here, Artenon? Because I'm not someone without honor. Well. All right. Oh, I know, I know, taken. I know. We're just demonstrating the silliness. Exactly. Not silliness. This is the this is a real issue that we're demonstrating. True, yeah. How can we Sad get some of these folks to get around that? And if we can't, we can't. If that industry is too broken, then we just... A lot of the stuff we did with LARPcraft, we did out of frustration because nobody else would share ideas or do things. So Ronan Oden and I were just like, screw it, we're doing it ourselves. We'll do it the way we want it. We want it to be open. We want it to be friendly. We want it to be engaging to people who don't play this game. You're never going to get somebody to change from a Nero or a Belagarth they enjoy their games. Let them have their games. Let's try to attract the people who we know could get into this game who aren't in this game. And if they leave our system for another system, that's fine. But what happened? We got them into the game. Some people can be converted, though. Um, I'm going to use Die Hard as an example again because he's one of those catch-all guys. Because he's done. he's been the paintball guy. He's been the airsoft guy. He's been the LARP guy. And the reason that he fits in so well to all those groups is because he's one of those just like whirlwind forces of personality and if you can find or attract one of those guys a handful will follow it's like the class clown at school you know it, he hung out with everybody all the clicks he wasn't labeled like everybody else or didn't consider himself labeled nobody else really sorry is that what my microphone was doing or was it just too close to my face yeah you, you derailed me i'm sorry what Sound good now. 
know, when I when I was getting all hyped up there, was my mic too close to my face or what? No. Not that I could tell. We want it to be right. That's what I heard. I, I was making a pun that, you know, you, you wanted it to be inclusive and, and friendly and... Oh, I thought my microphone... I, I, okay. I took it literally like my technology is bad. That's why I put the smiley face with a wink at the end, man. Of course, that means you were talking about... Gotcha. Emoticons make everything clear, don't you know? Absolutely. I'm going to replay this conversation in the if, in fact, it actually is recording it, because it says it's recording it, and see if it's actually going to be something that we can use for future sessions. So far, nobody has swore. Oh, well, son of a... <laughs> oh. I think I said shit a couple of times, but... And no. again! <laughs> well, that just was the point. <laughs> Jerry will no, just say caution swears. So you're going to put on there the beep whenever somebody, whenever there's a swear on there? Or just whenever you feel like it or it makes the conversation seem more interesting? Yeah, just do that to my entire, anything, anything <laughs> I say. Just beep, <laughs> and the Ronan's thing goes blank. It's the R2 thing. <coughs> Sorry about all the coughing tonight. Yeah, how dare you have a tickle in your throat? It's just so annoying. I don't, ugh. It's not like it's cold season or anything. <laughs> Alright, well, I put some good main points together on this mediation. So I think this is a great first step. I don't know that we want to actually, perhaps we can work with our own role players first, do some character sessions, schedule something on the LARPcraft calendar now that there is one, and put together a list of, you know, maybe we'll do one once a week or once every other week, just some things where, from the mediator standpoint, perhaps I would, I would uh, have the speakers in the channel who are able to talk, and I would mute everybody else. So points can't get way off oh, topic until real... the question and answer session. That's a really good idea, especially if you're planning on doing it on TeamSpeak. I was assuming a <laughs> written forum. Oh no, live, baby. <laughs> Woohoo. And this is just slowly treading downhill here. Well, I'm actually going to uh, duck out for the night. Sounds good. La vista. Take Hi. care. Stay safe with all the snow. Stop coughing. <laughs> I'm trying. See ya. Night. Night. User disconnected from your channel. Huh. There they go. It's now the recording session will only record who is set to record. Okay. Now I think you guys can still have private conversations between each other. If you click on your TeamSpeak, I believe you can open a chat text or you can you can do it where I can't hear you. You can have a sub talking thing. Some of our Minecrafters figured that out. So that'd be something to to play with. You're lucky I'm on it the way I am right now. I <laughs> I don't know if I can figure that out. I don't know either. I'll have to ask some of the kids who figured that out. Dang whippersnappers. I am awake. <laughs> Falling asleep in the rocking chair? No. Somebody said they stole my sword. I will have to hurt them. <laughs> I don't know how they did that. But anyway. We can stay on topic hey, that way. Wake up.
And this is good that you poked me too, so that way I can figure out in the recording if that's going to pick up or not. Because even if I have you... Okay, Sephiris, try that again. I have him muted now, and I'm going to see if he can poke me. Hey, wake up. Yeah, he can still do it. So he can still interrupt, even if he's muted. I'm not hearing anything. Is that how it's supposed no. to go? Yeah, you're not supposed to. It only will pop up on your your screen. There you go. And there's sub chats. There you go. A happy New Year. So those are PMs. Yeah, that's essentially what it does. Is it opens up a PM channel. So it's a text only, just a side kind of thing. Yeah, that'll be great too for keynote presentation. So if there, if you have three people talking on a presentation, you can have them in a PM to chat about things that you want to bring up or things that have to be changed while a presenter's talking. Hmm. That'd be pretty sweet. Okay, Lieutenant, can you go over the bullet points that you've gotten from the rambling that's happened so far? Okay. Well, we talked a lot about the role play fall off, which is a great, interesting conversation on how one role player can either be good or bad influence on an entire group. Uh, okay, and then other main points we hit on how to get a new character to interact with other characters, breaking the mold with players and staying in character, topic panel of how to play a character. How to be better support for players creating characters as elders. Holding a role play session with question and answer to follow. And then sessions designed for groups specifically and sessions designed for characters specifically. Or players, I should say. So one in character and one out of character. Oh, that's not a role play session. That actually, I didn't. Did I say that in there? Am I rambling? Play, yeah, have holding a role play session with questions and answers to follow. So we'd have to describe, okay, what's an RP session? That's an in character. Yeah. What's a what's a session that's what's a group session? Okay, that's talking about how to host better games. What's a character session? That's how to out of character talk about how to be a better character with probably some examples and some RP in there. I would say throw certain thing on there and possibly how to improv successfully because, you know, 80% of what we do is improvisation anyway. That's another interesting um, thought that I keep forgetting. Um, that I guess you guys all know the main rule of improv, which is don't negate the premise. Eh. <laughs> Hmm? <laughs> Nothing. Explain I don't have that. enough breadcrumbs to get home. No? Okay. Um, He's a if, simpleton. Explain. If I were, if we were improving right now and I were to tell you I am holding a comb, Drop someone it. can just say, no, you're not. And granted, no, I'm not. <laughs> but you don't negate the premise just because I'm not holding a comb. You can add to it and say, uh, what color you know, is it? What? Yeah, well, what color is that? Where'd you buy it? That's not a comb. That's a brush. So you can negate that way so long as you supply uh, an alternative. But um, even though a lot of people don't know that rule, a lot of people know it intrinsically when they're role-playing. Oh, oh, where I think I they know what won't you're like you know you know like they won't question um, somebody who gives them a quest like hey there's. There's an evil tree that won't let us have any of its apples. Maybe the tree's not evil. Maybe it just is mad at you and it doesn't want to share. You know, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm making up stupid things now. You know, it's kind of odd that we're having to retrain ourselves to do something that we did for eight, nine, ten years straight fluently. Bye. Yeah, which is why I always say LARP is more of a regression. 
Didn't take the cookies, mommy. (laughs) Oh. But there's things like that where people just agree, yes, that thing is evil. We will kill the evil thing. Maybe it's not. Right. Like... Like just taking them over, kill them. Yeah, like the, uh, let's... Let's go back to Gandalahar for a second with uh, the bandits. Everybody thought that they were out just to uh, attack the village and everything like that. So everybody decided, hey, let's just attack the bandits because, you know, they're attacking us. Well, maybe there's a reason that they're attacking and they're not there just for this reason. Maybe you need to talk to them and find out some more information. I actually had a good conversation when I went looking for who did we send into town? Zuka and I forget who else. Man, it probably. Probably. Um, no, because I was actually standing on the fence line talking to people in character for a while until you guys gave me the whistle that they had come back. But we never got any of that information of there are other things out there until we came back in the next morning. Right. It was too dark for them to understand that the scarecrow things were a different thing, really. Which it it does surprise me. I mean, okay, bandits show up. They <clears throat> they look human. They have swords and armor and things along those lines. And now here's this creepy uh, scarecrow-looking thing, or. Um, a be a werewolf looking thing and people are going oh no the bandits are back or the bandits sent them or uh, like, really well there are a lot of technical issues too with no lighting and i lose our first run at a full weekend event the I npc schedule well. the npc schedule that we wrote out was golden how it was improvised not so golden yeah, but we just <laughs> well, we, didn't have enough people. That, we didn't have enough people. It was cold. Oh. There, were a lot of, there were a lot of factors. I still think it was a success because it it was our okay. first step to getting to the next level. Just because the shirt was wrinkled didn't mean it wasn't wearable. It was fine. People who came seemed to have an excellent time, so... would have liked to have taken a shower. (laughs) Yeah. That's why you just stand over the fire, because then you just smell like smoke. Oh, I wasn't worried about smelling. It was was my hair. (laughs) Why do you think I was wearing that bandana all the time? (laughs) Because it was fancy. uh, You're a barbarian. Your hair shouldn't matter. Well, I think our next event at the end of June, it'll be safe to say you can take a shower outside. We have the shower enclosure. We just couldn't can, use it. It was too cold. Can you say shrinkage? That would be nearly <laughs> hypothermia. But a lot of those pitfalls, too, that we were discussing can come back to the you know rumor seating before the event. And you know what would even make it more interesting, too, or at least to me it would, is if you post that sort of, you know, rumor seed event synopsis and don't tell anyone, but anyone who comes in and says, oh my God, there's a blankety blank. That sounds so cool. Maybe PM them with a small little extra. It might be right. It might be wrong. Who knows? But to reward, you know, renewed interest. So talking about posting rumors and truths in a game. Sounds like a topic to me. Rumors, falsehoods, and truths. Huh? Fine. I mean, there are things that could go in there that could be completely and totally false. Oh, you have to. <laughs> no fun otherwise. And the I mean, amount I... of things that we did wrong at Gandalahar were vital success points to us as Lovecraft. The epic failures that we encountered and how we overcame them and What failures did we have? What? What failures did we have? I think everything went along (laughs) pretty damn smoothly. 
No, come on, really, come on. Okay. And it was a lack of people, weather. lack of staff, lack of organization, lack of keeping communication. Um, it was a lot of my fault. No. One person was running too many things while other people could have been delegated those responsibilities because they're awesome at it. But essentially it just came down to there weren't enough NPCs and there weren't enough players. But again, we overcame them. We worked it out. We did things that a lot of groups never have done before, even with the small amount of people we had. It was not a success financially, but it was a great success in that I cannot wait till the next Gandalfar event because there's going to be so many new faces. Gandalfar is becoming the new Maywood. Maywood is epic and will go down in LARP history as a shrine realm that you will want to visit. But you never can. You can. You can't, we just can't play games there. Oh. Which we probably could if I sucked up enough. Well, no, they said, wait. They said that uh, you couldn't uh, do the trolley there, but they said you, did they also say we can't do our uh, live action role play there? Correct. Whoa. I did not know that. Yes, it's in that letter that I posted in the Maywood Realm scroll. Quite frankly, though, they were being such assholes about it, I would just, yeah, forget it. But We'll just let everybody calm down. I'll, I'll see if I can talk to them again in spring. It was my fault by not going there personally. I should have not told them over email anything. I should have went there and said, hey, here's the idea. Here's what we want to do. You get a lot better response than here's what we want to do, and here's a flyer for it already. You know, like they felt threatened at that point. That was a big promoter error on my part. If they say no, can we set it on fire? No. Oh. No, it's a beautiful place. And by them saying that we no longer meet the environmental goals of Maywood is a load of horse crap. We're the ones We've that got... were cleaning it up. Right, exactly. And we have proof of that. They just don't want people in costumes running around their park once a month. All right. It'd be nice to just play there once a year. And that's another topic, too. We're going to find out something that we've never done before either. Playing at so many different realms. Now we have places in Milwaukee and Racine and Cambridge and St. Williams Bay and Maryville, Wisconsin and Greenbush. We're not even going to be in Sheboygan. How is that going to affect the local Sheboygan pe st people? I, I, I firmly believe we're going to lose them. Our original core players will be gone. Who do you consider the, the original core other than you and Odin and Ronan and Bucky? Well, the group of the, the 20 people that always played with us. We have now jumped outside of their budget of now we're traveling. That's the unfortunate loss we'll have to take in order to play at games where there's 50, 100, 150, 200 people. We have to go where the numbers are. We weren't getting the numbers here. But we're evolving. I mean, Ronan, think back of all the things we've learned over the last three years. I've forgotten most of them. No, you didn't. Okay. You forgot that you didn't know them in the first place. That's right. I'm so glad you're here to remind me. I'm so glad I can brainwash you into saying anything I want you to say. We work so well as a team. Ronan, I say this. Mark. What? In front of the camera? Again? You're a natural. And Damn. go. What are we talking about? <laughs> I don't know. Make something up. Yeah. Ronan became famous as such. He's a legendary creature who will never die. Can you just bicker back and forth like this? It's really amusing. <laughs> yes. Indeed. You should have seen it when we were writing uh, writing the playbook. That was uh, <laughs> very interesting. That's not times. going to work. Yes, it will. Try it no, now. No, it won't. Then we role play it. Yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> 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 or 
or we could modify it like this. This would work. No, that didn't work either. But how about this? Oh, yeah, that would work. Yeah. We can't call it that. We can't call it that. Yeah, it was, it was, that was a hard thing to do. You seem my to be thinking of one specific example. Care to share? Uh, well, my favorite one was uh, how do the spells get, we had how many spells? I had five. Right, but how many did we originally come up with before they went in the uh, uh, rule book? Probably like a hundred. Right, okay, and we, oh, this spell we don't really need. And somebody else, and Odin or somebody would say, yeah, that's a cool spell, we should keep it. Okay, Rochambeau for it. And that's how a lot of our spells either went or stayed. <clears throat> we had a lot, we had too many, we had too few. Then we had to try to find it where we all agreed, okay, we can deal with about 10, 10 per element. Let's try that. And rock, paper, scissors, go. Some of them got pretty heated. The rule that's of 10 the, seems to work pretty well, though. That's, that's the main example I can think of. The, uh, some of the other ones would be uh, armor. Should uh, <clears throat> should cloth and furs or padded armor count as armor? Yes, no, no, yes, yes, no. It went back and forth. And then how many uh, armor points to assign to armor? Oh, God, that sucked. I remember that. A lot of sessions about that. We got to keep it low hit points, but you got to have 20. No, you got to have this. No, you can't have that. Armor seems to be one of those things that's always a problem for every group I've seen. Like, even within the same system sometimes. Because, oh god. <laughs> sometimes even one person thinks it's finalized one way, and then other person thinks it's finalized another, and they're both registering people and handing out varying point amounts it's it can get absolutely ridiculous which is why when we finally come to a final decision on this there will be a video that you can play at location God, hello yes. new people sit down and watch this and shut you up you know what in that 30 dollar membership that i just enacted for 2013 i could put the video rule book in there instead of the printed rule book eventually when we get it done Send them a printed one and a DVD. Yeah. That would be nice. That would be something no other group is doing. Hello and welcome to your official LARPcraft rulebook. You're not I still going don't to like understand calling it a rulebook, but it's going to be a rulebook. I always bring that up. Always. I call it a playbook. It's like a living script, but it's not. It's rules. Shut up, Ryan. <laughs> I don't like rules. Well, are you saying if somebody changes the, uh, like somebody does something super heroic and they need to be put down for all time as the the great hero or something like that? Okay, I'm using the I, 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 the term lore. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you guys. Uh, kind of general there. I'm more saying, like, say you set up a quest or you, you set up a plot line saying, you know, you there's rumors of beasts attacking livestock at so-and-so's farm. And then, you know, a player just out of nowhere pops off with, yeah, yeah, I heard about that. Rumor had it that, you know, there was this powerful warlord leading them and it's an army preparing to strike and you know just anything a, a good Im improvisational actor is just going to be able to throw something out there and playing D, &D as you well know ronan the players more often than not will throw you a curveball more often than you could ever dream of throwing them one so like how what happened to our tenant oh uh well when you look into the crypt uh you it kind of into madness and you need to finish walking the labyrinth to regain your sanity. <laughs> Something like that. We need to make a labyrinth. Talked about that. That's financially impossible. Sorry, that's something I accidentally threw in at the Guadalajara event, and I told our tenant about it after. 
Ooh, we tried ooh, to I work know. the schematics out for that. It would have to be in the tall grasses. We could We'd have to use could, the grasses as a labyrinth. We could so, do we, yeah. We could go all veil style and just use rope and tell them, okay, this is a wall. Here is what you see. Oh, veil. No, it's not. You're in I a see cave. Trees. Uh, I'm in a field. No, you're in a cave. Yeah, labyrinth um, could be a metaphor for all sorts of things. It could be a series of puzzles. It could be just you have to walk the path. Because I don't think I said specifically labyrinth. I think I said you had to walk the path to the end. What a you fantastic just... idea for the LARP con. Walk the labyrinth of the mind. Okay, who's mind? Because mine would be just a straight shot. The mini game of riddles. Better not be Ronin riddles. No, that'd be short and easy. It would have to be. Odin why? came up with awesome riddles. Why is my hall? Why is my labyrinth a hallway? I don't know. Why does it appear there's a hallway to you? But this was mean, a big beginning and an end. I hope we're sort of answering your questions at first with this random spieling of well what do you do well if, and uh, this is it yeah. apparently so if somebody throws in uh extra stuff that's not related to the actual thing well could be related that they're throw just throwing out there i'd say roll with it i don't know I mean, if it's a big point if it's a really big point and you get if it gets stepped on Yeah, the thing that's catching me up is your word is the lore. The word lore is the big red flag. Right. Uh, again, I, I it, poor choice of words. Uh, let's say game setting or just the overall, you know, outline that you had already set up for the event you know this is what i expect to happen over either the day or like at gondolahar you know it, it's three days long over these three days i want these things to happen and then players try and introduce material that you had neither prepped for i mean do you just outright contradict them and say no that's not the case or do you just roll with it and try and have an emergency meeting with what NPCs you can grab and say, hey, let's let's play this out? Well, I think that would depend upon the situation and if you can, if you have enough time to be able to inform your NPCs of such things. Because with, with, with D&D, man, it, it, when somebody throws you a curveball, it's really easy to adapt because there's nobody physically representing it. Uh you know, if the players say that they're going to, to go to this whatever location that you never even told them existed, but it sounded good, so you decided to roll with it. I don't know. I, I guess I, I lost my own train of thought in, amongst the ramblings. I think I understand what you were saying, and I apologize for getting you off track earlier. When you're talking, and I can answer it in both, in both senses, if somebody's trying to step on your lore through the scrolls or through the written text, you as an administrator and a moderator are able to correct that. So from a lore standpoint, and I know you didn't mean lore, but from a lore standpoint, if somebody tries to do that, that's easily corrected. In the right, scrolls. right. I, I've actually already, I deleted my own thread that we are the Viren because okay. of that reason. Okay. In the game, I can point out two specific examples of how uh, our group, um, <clears throat> sent another group's schedule oh God. into vast array, <laughs> to say the least. But as game organizers ourselves, when we were introduced to the other game, we, we felt nothing happening, so we stirred stuff up. <laughs> and it was amazing. And it luckily it went off right. And... I think a lot of reason why it did go off right is because of the people we were with and the group we were with. And the game promoters trusted... The game promoters kind of... No. There's kind of a trust. No, no, no. Can pull that off? 
the second time anyway. Yeah, unfortunately, in your guys' situation, I mean, you have yourself and, and Ronan and Odin and Great Core with Midland. You know, you guys can bounce stuff around on each other. And if, if it came down to it, as far as colony lore goes or events, you know, you could tailor some of your events to include just hints at some of the ongoings at other realms. Uh, so I think it's going to be a little bit more difficult uh, in my situation, at least till I find a couple people that I personally trust to really help build the world that I, I've envisioned for Avrin. Yeah, you got a, you got a problem. You've built a world already. You've built so much lore that now they have to confine to your lore. Have you noticed? And I hate pointing out my own faults. I absolutely hate it. The few where's, that there are. Where's, where's the Inland Water Colony's backstory? There's not one. Yeah. That's terrible. Where's the finishing story for Maywood? Doesn't exist. Right. Well, as far as Abraham goes, kind of, kind of there. The, the the reason I presented the the, the lore I did with Abraham is my original group of players were my D and D guys, and we were already playing in this world. So you converted a world. Correct. Interesting. Interesting. I, I thought that, well, it, it's both my D&D campaign as well as the world of the novel that I've been writing for a few years now. Well, that can work. You just have to not, I, I want to say not limit it to the things that were happening in those two uh things that you brought up oh absolutely not the book came first the D&D campaign it was more I took the setting of the book and set it up so that you know I, I've I've actually included parts of my campaigns in my book because you know the way things worked out I was like hey you know that was really cool you know I, I actually throw some some uh what, what's the word I'm looking for dialogue in there and you know there's a good couple chapters right there Right, and yeah, that, like I said, that that would be fine to, to I, I would say that would be fine to use that, but as things may not progress the same in a uh, LARP realm as they would, obviously not in a, in a D and D campaign. Right, and, and I'm prepared for that. What I tried doing was set the the background. You know, this is what got us where we are, but where we go from here is ultimately up to my characters and anybody that I can get to help me write lore or quest ideas or what have you. That's the right way to do it. All I did was set up the background. The rest is up to them. And even for a game, for like an NPC schedule, I really want. I can't wait. I cannot wait to do sessions on this of how to set up a really great NPC schedule and plot line and subplots. So at this time, these monsters are going to do these things. What happens after that? No idea. It's going to depend on what the players do. I, I would like to ask uh, one thing. Uh, I know that the red trailer was used as like Monster Central at Gandalahar, and to me that would be fine to do again. But if the NPCs are going to spend the event as NPCs, I'd like for them to have their own like little camp kind of thing, like I tried to do with the bandits, but yeah, that kind of fizzled out to crap. Uh, things along those lines where they spend, you know, most of the, I don't want to say most of the time, because obviously you got to go back to the village sometimes. But where they can be there as a central unit, like, okay, we know at this time this is what's going to happen, so uh, we're going to excuse ourselves from the uh, village, you know, 15, 20 minutes early, go to this special place where we're going to 
uh, meet up, be, be like a camp. We can have a fire there, all kinds of stuff like that. I'm done. <laughs> You're talking basically a change room, huh? Well, yeah. and that's another great topic that we can go into at another time. What we learned from using a NPC trailer, the thought was to keep the NPCs out of sight. From what we know from the other games, it was a major drag when you saw your monsters leaving the monster area. When you're in game oh, yeah. and in character, that's up. Yeah, it's definitely meta. Yeah, you know, and definitely meta gaming happens with that. So right, you can't help that. So we tried to make it as stealthy as possible. Unfortunately, it was like four thousand miles away from the camp. So. It sucked wasn't for the that NPCs. Bad, but it wasn't that good either. Right. It was a lot better when you moved the trailer closer. True. So those are things we can talk about from an implementation standpoint on the promoter side. And we will definitely do a different at Gandalahar. That's We've talked about that, and I think we have a good understanding of how to do that. And again, temperatures will be warmer. There will be more people. We have the props now. That's why you're my champion. You're my champion. And we just feed off each other. <laughs> My mind went straight to the other when you said that, but all right. I'm um, not going to feed you. All right, this is completely off topic, but uh, in regards to the forums, are you going to identify the the moderators, or are you just going to let us, you know, wield our power in silence? Uh, you. You're the. What did I say you were? You're the founding elders. I want to be known as Super Kami Guru. I really wanted to get rid of the Overlord status because it's just so big. We are We're not big. gods. We're really not gods. We're not hey, Overlords. Give me gods. The more power you give to us, the more people want to be us. And ugh, you can't. Why do I feel like I'm being demoted? Because I want to demote all of us. You, me, and Ronan, or Odin. Ronan gets demoted twice. Thanks. <laughs> You've been stripped of your princess points. Princess. <laughs> but I still got my brownie points. Princess points. Oh my god. Where did you get that? You never heard that? I've um, never heard that. I've no, lived a um, sheltered life. Who started it? Uh, movie, hang on. Tu Wong Fu. I'm going to have to watch it. It's Probably Tu Wong Fu. It. Thanks for Patrick everything, Swayze Julie. And and Wesley, you will never see Wesley Snipes and Patrick Swayze in the same light again if you watch that movie. Well, of course, they become ten times more amazing. <laughs> That's going to be the ultimate burn now, yep. Okay, so how long until Gandalahar? Which is our next big event, correct? the next overnight. Is that going to be the only overnight from now on, or? Unless we can find another realm. I would like to do it at other locations, but we don't have any other uber realms to do that in. I think Gandalahar works very well. For us, yeah. yeah. I like that place a lot, actually. I just like the fact, the only thing that it's missing is showers. And maybe when they get the new building up, they might have showers. Who knows? Now, do you want to... I know this is going a little into the future here, but do you want to change the place where the village is, or is that like the only water spigot? Or Because if we change it, we can actually send people out to get water. We already were sending out people to get water. Nicholas Farseer was the only one who took that quest. He went down to the river, filled the bucket, and came back couple times the other thing i was talking about is all the modern stuff that's over there by the uh the arena yeah they were putting in uh more underground spigots they had the above ground spigots over by the fields those other two fields you saw those other two fields that had spigots so we'll probably move the village out there more if right. possible that's what i was saying to get away from you know, if people want to park over there, now they can, and they're not 15 miles away. The other thing is, is we made it over there because it was closer to the bathrooms. 
and at night it's really nice to not walk through the dark and stuff but hey whatever you can try it either way it's not that much longer of a walk e oli porta johns yeah more expenses when we have flush toilets let's presume that both of them are going to work this year yeah you're 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 right it was a lot closer to the bathrooms I hated the look, though, too. You know, the pole barn, the camper. Maybe we can put panels on one of your ATVs and make it look like a chariot. You know, um, as far as moving the, the village away from, like, the bathrooms, I would keep them where they were just because... I uh, recall a few events where there's been that kind of distance between where the village is and, say, like where the village and the monster trailer was between the village and the bathrooms. And it's really annoying to have to figure out in-game reasons of why you're walking alone in that direction. Just because you need to pee. Privy is so far away. Who built this town? I'm picking berries. Yeah, generally. Yeah, I'm going to go find some wildflowers. Or some bandit who will hit me over the head and you'll have to come and rescue me in five minutes. See ya. I'm going to go find flowers and pee on them. <laughs> I can tell you it destroyed probably 75% of the video. Yep. Couldn't use 75% of it because you could see the trailer or cars or something. <clears throat> but we live, we learn. There really isn't much besides that field right next to the arena that's close enough to the bathrooms to use. We could move the village. Like the main tent could have been on the back side of that field. That would have helped a lot. That would have brought a lot of people further into that field, which would surround you more with woods and the, the arena. Are you talking... Like where that the out of game was. camp area was? No, uh, where, where, they where we the were, fence. but where the fence was. Oh, move like right up against there, the fence? Move it, even beyond the fence. Move it along those wood lines and put the fence up where the road is. Oh, or something, you know, something okay. like that. I see. I so want to use that stuff that that. A person built. I'm just afraid of destroying it. Oh, those yeah, cabins. who knows what it's going to be like next year. Yeah, those uh, little uh, cabins sunk back in the woods there. I'm planning on using that for something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The odd one must live there. Which is the guy that you didn't like. The odd guy? Oh yeah, I hated that guy. I see a plot point developing. 